The views and opinions of this podcast are solely our own, with no direct intention to offend or upset. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. Well, hello everybody and welcome to episode 14, series 5 of the Very Scottish Movie Review Podcast. What's the script, mate? What is the script? My name is Craig and as always, by my side, in equal measure, two little boys, Big Chris Ness. How are you, Chris? I am fine and dandy. Counting down the days to Christmas. Fuck up, <laughs> Christmas. It's Halloween today. Happy Halloween. Uh, well, it won't be when you're listening to us, people, but we're recording this on Thursday, so... Happy Halloween! <laughs> I've got Spider-Man and a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I went to school this morning. So I have... Aye. And the Tyrannosaurus Rex costume takes batteries because there's fans inside it to make the heat. Oh, One right. of the ones. His wee face is in the, the breast there, you know what I mean? He's running a bit... <laughs> Let's see the videos, man. Funny as fuck. You dressed up this year, mate. You get in plant. You usually have a wee Halloween soiree for the boys, you know? Aye. Uh, well, we we're, we're, we're going here, but they get cancelled for other circumstances. But hey, well, we've decided oh. just to go get something to eat first. <laughs> so other that's circumstances? That sounds like an <laughs> STD. One of the boys has get gone in here. It's not happening. Uh, well, I think it was actually a death. Oh, now I feel bad. See, see what you done to me there? You never gave me prior warning, now I feel like a dick. Aye, aye. Well, there you go. Lessons of today. Don't get ahead of yourself. It's a hex on my Die. face now. Uh, so, everybody, welcome. Welcome to another rip-roaring, fascinating, funny episode. Thanks for everybody that tuned in uh, last week to Logan, which we thoroughly enjoyed, by the way. Um, with a good response on the socials and on the audios for it. Uh, YouTube's took another fucking nosedive. I don't know what's going on with that, but it just doesn't like us anymore, but I don't care. Um, so thanks again to Quaint for the title music, and always uh, we have on board with his native origins uh, for all your bespoke and leisure wear, which is imminent to be on the market. Tim's had the uh, merchandise through the door, he had his kids in it, and he went to uh, the Titanic Museum last week, and he was strutting about Belfast with his hoodie on. Oh, where a legacy! Where a legacy, big man! Can't saw saying back to him, what are you talking about? Yeah, fucking batty. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, guys. Um, you can find us all over the place on the uh, electronic websites of your choice, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, X, and you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, all the things. Just fucking put what's the script in and you can find us. Aye. Have you, have you just cut your ear a wee bit? When the wind's blowing, you'll hear us. <laughs> if you go to the beach and you pick up a wee shell and put it to your ear, you can hear us. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Imagine that wee shells and all that. Well, hello there. Welcome. <laughs> Uh, on the Facebook, we're at 314 the group members, which is great. 313 still at the YouTube, and Chris is rocking over 1800 on the X platform. How's the uh, the talk tick doing? How's the talk tick there? Oh, the talk the talk tick is in the 400s now. Ah, oh. it's either just under 450 or the yeah, 450. It's running about there anyway. Oh, so smashing! We're coming every day. I uh, see. See. TikTok, is it still you need to have a thousand followers to do a live? Is that right? Aye. I don't know. I have no yeah. idea. It's Aye. just, it's not, it's, it's, it's the app itself. I think it's fucking, I don't know what it's up, but wait, man. Because, like I say, it's when there was 200 people following it on TikTok, you were getting 250 odd fucking views or something. Now there's 400 odd people on it, and you're Aye. still getting 250 views. <laughs> Aye, <that's... laughs> 
It's not right, the bastard. It's not right at all. Uh, um, promote your post. Promote your post. You want me to promote your post? That will you fuck off? Aye, exactly. But uh, before we get into today's movie, mate, what have you been watching this past seven days on your television series on your television set? What have you been watching? Well, I do reckon it's going to echo much of yours, mm. but because we've done Logan. I went on an X-Men binge. So X-Men Days of Future Past, X-Men Apocalypse, X-Men, X-Men 2, X-Men Last Stand, X-Men First Class. The only ones I didn't watch were the, the Wolverine one. <laughs> so, uh-huh. uh, and then, since it's spooky season and all that part, of, I started watching horror films. So I watched Suspiria. I think that's how you say it. It's no great, but people might watch it, like it, watch it. That's I think I'm sh- I'm sure that the witches, right? The witches. So, but it's full because I'm I'm sure it is a remake. I'm sure there was a right. film back in the seventies or something. But, is that a new thing? Hi. Hey. Okay. Is that a new film? Suspiria. No, I think it was done fucking twenty eighteen or something. All right. What's on? Is it Tilda Swinton? I'm sure that she's in it. And the uh, last it played Madam Webb. Dakota Johnson. Aye, aye. And that Mia Goff, her it's an order horror films in her. She's <laughs> she's in it too. <laughs> yeah. uh, Scary script across my desk. I'll do it. <laughs> then I went back and watched the old classic Fright Night. <laughs> it was smashing Fright Night. Oh fuck. <laughs> oh, it was that it was brilliant, man. Especially when his wee pal starts turning into a big fucking dog. I've seen that in a fucking long time, actually. Aye, that was good. And then I finally watched the new Halle Berry one, Never Let Go. It was forgettable. But, decent enough idea. Just, aye, forgettable. (laughs) It's like sex with Christopher. Forgettable. (laughs) (laughs) It's not what I've heard. I've had sex with myself plenty of times and I keep coming back. That's not what my mother tells me. My mother says I'm fucking smashing. <laughs> you could do this, Travis. Boom. <laughs> and I, last night, I watched Vanishing on 7th Street. Ah, and you said that in the text. Uh, it's, it's, it's still not so happy. Again, uh-huh. good idea, but just, just wasn't it going to be. So, Probably that was me. That was all my eyeball delights. Mm, quite a few of them as well, I'll tell yeah. you. Ah, what about yourself, mate? What were you right into? Like a dog oh, eating was... beetroot? Aye, I was right into a lot of things. So I'm now on the back end of Series 5 of The Rookie, still smashing. I caught up with Grotesquery, Episodes 7, 8 and 9, smashing. Um, great twist in it, I know. Fucking great twist in it. Um, so I'd, I'll gemmed it, it's not watched it. I think there's a couple more to go. Just bust it when it's done. It's superb. And then, like much like yourself, I went down the route with the forky hands and the fucking, the white eyes and the wheelchair <laughs> fucking brainiac people in that. So I watched X-Men, X-Men 2, X-Men 3, X-Men's Origins Wolverine, X-Men First Class, Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, Dark Phoenix. So I've done them all including Logan and the Wolverine, which I'd done last week. And it was quite the journey, quite the journey. Dark Phoenix was a great final act, man, but it was too little too late, you know what I mean? Again, it had mm. the potential in the budget there to be something better than it did, but it was a lot of fucking empty, dragged out spaces and all that, but it was all right. Uh, and then I went and watched Jurassic Park 3, 2001, uh, which was no bad. Watched that with the boys. And then I watched Deadpool, Deadpool 2, and again, Deadpool and Wolverine. So I did, Um, because I was having a wee drink, and I thought, oh, Deadpool, yeah! (laughs) He's funny, guys. He's a smashing funny dude, him. I like him. Uh, High five and dope in on the lake, you know what I mean? And yesterday I watched uh, the new Matt Wallace documentary, Am I a Racist? Uh, mm. And that was obviously the same as what is a woman 
You know what I mean? Very eye opening. Uh, and it just shows these people in a pure light. And I think the overriding thing was there's a lot of white people going to seminars and meetings to be told that they're racist just for being white. And they're getting charged for it as well. This fucking, you need to watch it, mate. You need to watch it. But I don't blame the, the people of colour that are charging these monies and talking to these people. I blame the, the white guys that are gone through pain for guilt. That's fucking mental. Just watch it. Um, ah, it's good. And that was me, mate. That was me. That was uh, all my oculars this, this past week. I really enjoyed it. Not the lights. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But um, it was my turn to pick from your list last week. I picked an absolute doozy. One we both had on my list, actually. And it was 2002's Martin Scorsese classic, Gangs of New York, mate. Oh, tell us about it a wee bit. A wee tiny bit before I ask oh. you what else happened in that year. Oh, it's a sensation of a film that it just gives you the old America there when everything was all at ball, boiling pot. Ball, I was going to say balling point now. The bit, the bit, you with your testicles out there. <laughs> <laughs> aye, but aye, the New York, it's just a boiling point, isn't it? Whoa. Set in a time where the the conscription's coming and fucking tensions are high, immigrants coming in and all that. So just aye, captured. One of the most number one fucking uh, tourist destinations in the world, what it was like back in the day, you know what I mean? How it, was, how it was formed and how, to me anyway, how the fucking, the world back then seems very similar to the one right now, so. Aye, that boiling point, tipping point. Um, <laughs> I, I think you were actually quite kind of saying it was a time when New York was at boiling point, I think it was just on fire. <laughs> it's fucking, but we'll discuss it a wee bit in depth, mate, in a wee minute. First of all, this movie was out in 2002, which was 22 fucking years ago, Jesus Christ. But if you'll uh, bear with me, I just want to press my wee button on the time machine and say, let's go back to the year, back to the year, back to the year of our film. Chris, what happened to me? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Aye, so... We've been a 2002 in the past, so some of these could be duplicate facts that happened and all that, but I've tried my best to swan tough through them. But aye, so obviously 2002 was a US invasion of Afghanistan. Now how that all kicked off. <laughs> um, uh, uh, the Netherlands legalizes euthanasia. The first in the world to do so, apparently. What? I thought it was. Aye, I, I thought it was Switzerland, didn't it? Aye, aye. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, but apparently. Is Switzerland part of the European Union? But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. Nah. I'm not sure. But apparently that's what it was. There was a coup against the Venezuelan president, Hugo Chavez. I think that lasted about a month and he was back in again. Aye. <laughs> 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 uh, no, well, that was that a success. Was, that that was the uh, um, that that actual curve is a lot to do with the film, the dictator. Sasha Baron uh, Cohen. Uh, um, Jimmy Carter visited Cuba, the first president to do so since nineteen fifty nine. There you go. And the Queen had an empty, and she was celebrating <laughs> her golden jubilee. We gonna celebrate um, an empty. Uh, so there you go. The Queen's Golden Jubilee. <laughs> Mad yeah. Charlie keeping edgy at the door and all that. <laughs> uh, ma, uh, police are coming. Uh. <laughs> uh, films that year. Yeah, the classic Scooby Doo live action film. Oh, that was a joy and a delight, I'll tell you. For a young me, that was smashing. <laughs> <laughs> Zoinks! <laughs> um, you'd also Red Dragon, City of God, The Pianist, Lilo and Stitch, Mr. Deeds, Panic Room, and We Were Soldiers. So, mm -hmm. aye, there was, there was ocular delights that year. 
a mixed bag, but some good ones on there. Songs. I <laughs> do. It wasn't so happy, but they were still there. So we had "Hot in Here" by Nelly. You know what I mean? He was he was taking his clothes off and all that. <laughs> um, we had "Bloody" by Puddle of Mud. What? We had with. <laughs> we, we had "Without Me" Eminem. Mm. We had "Whenever, Whatever" by Shakira. Shakira. <laughs> and we had <laughs> "Heaven." <laughs> we had "Heaven" by DJ Sammy. Like that. And that Love kicked that. off a. Uh, everybody was shoulder dancing to that one. And then we had Seven Days by Craig David. Know what I mean? Oh, my boy. <laughs> my boy, Craig David. I won his first album on Clyde One. I phoned up Susie Maguire, and it was she'd done a thing every week called Stars in Their Wise. And you had to put your pants on your head and sing a karaoke song over the phone. I done it, and I won a CD. Yeah, yeah. I didn't they know you had your pants in your head? They didn't, but I did do it because my work colleague was there and said, you better fucking do it. And then he went on the phone and says, no, he's doing it, he's doing it. <laughs> so I had to get in my wee, I had a wee hut, I had to get my wee hut and shut the door and take my scants off and stick them on my head and then put my trousers back on and start singing there the phone. Because I don't like to win oh. things half-hearted. I like to do these things Aye. fucking. Bit like I'm all in. Aye. Oh. But shake my hair here. for about fucking <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> oh. Oh. Death's that year again. Oh. Try to pick different ones. Uh, Dudley Moore died. Oh, we are. Uh, Jam Master J died. Rod Steiger died. And Spike Mulligan died. Oh. Comedy genius, that boy. So that was that was your wee deaths there. I only picked four because there was we <laughs> were well, then deaths and we each one. I was like, this this is dark. <laughs> Steep burn. <laughs> so that was a, a wee rundown down of two thousand and two. There shit was going down, uh, but that that was the key points there. It was a new a new century, a new fucking millennium. Do you know what I mean? It was the, the, the dawn of these fantastic times that we live in today. Fuck's <laughs> sake, man. You know what I mean? Little did we know. Uh, just over the horizon, we had seven and a half pound pints of lager waiting for us to buy and heating allowances getting cut and pensioners like fucking popsicles uh, over the winter and all that, you know what uh, I mean? Dogs and cats living together. Aye. Uh, <laughs> strange times, mate. Strange times. <laughs> Budgies living in cat smooths. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> but uh, that was great, mate. Thanks very much for that wee trip. That wee trip back. Um, I'm sad that I'm back at 2024, but there you go. Uh, mm. But it was, uh, as we said, Gangs of New York, mate. Martin Scorsese. Give us a quick synopsis rundown of the movie plot and tell us who's in it in the financials, please. No, oh, well, I haven't wrote that down, so I'll just make this up on the spot, as I will. So, I'll help I... you. Uh, we've got young Amsterdam, obviously. His, his father is beaten by the Bill Butcher there, leader of the native gangs, and grows up. Sets about a plot for revenge. All the while, the city is in political turmoil, shall we say. We've all got a draft and all this going on. Meanwhile, you've got your man Amsterdam there, cozying up to build the butcher to get his revenge. And, uh, <laughs> a lot of disastrous kind of New York because it looks very bleak. Aye. And the film is Daniel Day Lewis, Leonardo DiCaprio, Cameron Diaz, Brendan Gleeson, Liam Neeson, John C. Reilly, Jim Broadbent, Henry Thomas, Gary Lewis, and Stephen Graham. It's also the the budget for this film was a hundred million dollars, and according to the interwebs, it made a hundred and ninety four million dollars. So, mm. not exactly a success, but at the same time, if somebody chaps the door and went, <laughs> there's 94 million on Taffy, aye, I'll take that. So, I I would say that <laughs> fucking, the marketing maybe just about, about in profit, but that, that really fucking threw me. Aye. That, that, 
that box office, it really did. Thumbs like, oh, what, what was the problem with this back in the day? Because you've seen the video I put it. It's like I nominated for 10 Academy Awards and all that. Daniel Day-Lewis, <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio, Carmen, you just rhymed them all off. The settings, everything. I'm like, that. Yep, it's... No, much like yourself, mate, I was, <laughs> as they say out there, gobsmacked. Mm-hmm. Because it's, I, it's like you say, the production's fucking top class. The acting in it, like, I mean, if I think Daniel Day Lewis, I think you're this film. You know what I mean? Aye, definitely. Uh, it's well written, well directed. Fucking, it's, aye, it's everything you want to be like a major hit. So I don't know. Because apparently, what took this to the cleaners was Chicago. Ah, uh, right, okay. So, Catherine Zeta Jones, no. That's, I don't know, mate. It's maybe it's I. Maybe people were not Well, at the same time, I know. Apparently, what kind of held this volume up was nine uh, eleven happened. You know what I mean? Because I remember for a the time Oof. there, there was fucking anything. What relating to New York or anything terrorist and all that? It was getting fucking. It was getting postponed. What you remember uh, the film Swordfish? <clears throat> uh huh. Now they've, 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 they're back, they're carrying the big bus about and it hits a building. Aye. That film wasn't getting shown in cinemas because of that one scene. Ah, that's right. Like, yeah. you're going, fuck. <laughs> so, Aye, there was a, a lot, there was a few album covers for rappers getting fucking taken off the shelves and all that as well, weren't there? Yeah. yeah I so, remember rightly. Maybe that hurt it, but you wouldn't imagine so. Aye. But uh, IMDb gives us a 7.5 7. out of 10 and it, Almost carbon copy and rotten tomatoes, 73% out of 100. So, three out of four kind of thing, um, which is a fine score. It's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, we'll see what we give it towards the end. But, uh, aye, just in, in the grander scheme of things, when the movies we're getting out today, watch this back again for maybe the 10th, 15th time and like that with a spectacle, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, aye. It uh, fucking takes you right back. None of this fucking. <laughs> green screen shite, you know what I mean? You feel like you're back in time with this fucking place. And <laughs> interesting fact, mate, it was actually shot in Italy. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Aye. was it? Aye, shot in Rome, Italy, apparently, and they built everything. See, because <sighs> they couldn't film it in New York, because New York Disney looked like New York back then. Aye. So, aye. <laughs> So that's so fucking so. Martin Scorsese could get him for his dinner, eh? Fucking <laughs> shit. We're going to do it next to my house in Italy, all right? Yeah, fucking <laughs> bastards. So we Bye. mentioned, right, very, very quickly, the for me anyway, right, and maybe for a lot of other people, don't it be yourself, it shows you New York in a light that I had never been accustomed to or thought about. I thought... America went from cowboys and Indians to Victorian kind of times with buildings going up and all that shit. I never knew about this shanty town, the five points and all that, murderers square yeah. and all that. That looks fucking wild, doesn't it? Wild. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hellish. It's fucking, I could only imagine the smell. <laughs> it's fucking... Aye. I kind of like you, mate. I, I just thought America, they went for like you say, fucking people running about the Western and all that shit, and then going right to the guys with the fucking the daft wigs and all that top hats. How you doing, madam, and all that? And then they went for that right into fucking just normal people. I wind, <laughs> wind, wind up cars this. and all that. Oh, there's a wind up <laughs> car we are. Honk, honk. <laughs> I, you know I, mean? I went for, I do declare right to. Listen here, see? You know what I mean? It's fucking... Aye. Aye, that's it. Get those buildings up here, see? So I can go to Wall Street and that and like, see? Aye, that's... But this this uh, hole in the timeline that we never knew about, it's such an eye-opener, and it's delivered brilliantly by Scorsese. I wrote down... There's, there's factions of this movie, bits of this movie, that kind of gave me Tarantino vibes. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Slow motion fighting with kind of a wee modern bit of music in it and stuff like that. It was I was like, oh, that's very turned. Do you know me? But Scorsese, <laughs> I think Scorsese's fucking magic anyway. But 
No. It's uh, the costumes and all that and the, the fucking hairstyles and the backdrops. It's just amazing, mate. Amazing. Aye. What does that mean? Well, apparently fucking Scorsese acquired the rights to this in 1979. Because this was a book. Apparently it was based on a book that he read. But he, got, he secured the rights to this in 1979. But he couldn't get a production company to agree to everything he wanted until 1999. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I got this a lot earlier, but... Aye. But, but, do you know, in the grander scheme of things, I'm probably glad he didn't, because he's obviously shot this at a time where the budget was fucking massive. Technology and settings and actors themselves were a lot better as well, probably. Because yeah. you're in the math there, mate, right? We've got Daniel Day-Lewis, right? He's the fucking goat, as far as I'm concerned, actor-wise. He's <laughs> fucking, he's the only one that can uh, chin Steven Spielberg with Oscars, you know what I mean? Hey, hey! Get my three here, I know you best. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio, who's a fucking best actor in the waiting. Cameron Diaz, it was hot property at the time. And then you've got the the so-called support actors, Brendan Gleeson, Jim Broadbent, who I fucking love, by the way. Um, yeah. Stephen Graham and John C. Reilly is Mulroney. Uh, we're going to be leaving that up there on the lamppost for you now. No one will touch it because they know it's mine. <laughs> Is that right, John C. Riley? Aye. <laughs> uh, uh, there's, there's something else in this film I know that I don't know if a lot of people know about it. But Do divulge. Man, yes. Jack Jarvis is Squire. Told Kiernan is in this. <laughs> Away with you. Yes. I won't believe it. I don't he, believe it. <laughs> he plays the other fire chief. See when the house is on fire. Does he? Yes, he plays the other fire chief. See him when he's talking to Jim Broadbent. Uh-huh. He's that like, soon you'll be out fought, outmatched, and all that. And then the next time Bill shows up, he he plays the fire chief. Uh, so there you go. <clears throat> happening on you? Oh, that's a smattering of trivia gold. Uh, that trivia gold. Uh, we got we got we got a podcast be there. <laughs> So, uh, uh, that's good. Oh, that's actually through me there. Speechless. I'm, I feel no. dumber for not knowing it, you know what I mean? But, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, mate, right? There's a lot of trivia surrounding him. Um, right. And it just it just adds to what you would probably just say, aye, that sounds like him, you know what I mean? To simulate Bill the Butcher's fake eye, Sir Daniel Day-Lewis had his own eyeball covered in prosthetic glass. Uh, Day-Lewis learned to tap the fake eye with the tip of the knife without blinking. Which is one of the the best scenes, and it when it you think it's just obviously sound effects, and he's no, but that is a glass aye. eye to cover his own eye, and he's tapping it with a knife, man. Aye, aye, mate. But I say is he's, I say at the beginning. See when I think of Daniel Day Lewis, I think of this film. I mean, well, Boulder Butcher is my favourite character in this, right? And I know you're not supposed to like him. I know he's supposed to be. The fucking, the bad, old fucking America sort of thing. But see, because he's that fucking good at playing the part. No, I mean? It, you can imagine that person. He made that person real instead of just a fucking film character. You know what I mean? It's so, like, even, like I said to you, see the, the accents in this. His accent, his New York accent is actually fucking extinct. They had mm-hmm. to learn this shit. <laughs> I know what I mean? Aye. So it's superb, man. Look, I t- tip my hat to the gentleman. Aye. 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 It's, it's amazing. Because um, there was a lot there was a lot of trivia around his accent as well. Obviously, off camera, he never broke character. Um, even when it was... What was it again? I think I read that... I never wrote it down. It was Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese eventually persuaded him to go for dinner with him and he went out <laughs> as Bill the Butcher in character and sat and ate and ordered as Bill the Butcher and he said the waitress was so frightened she didn't want to serve the table. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching an interview and it was Liam Neeson talking about it mm-hmm. and he's like I, I would see him in the morning and I'm no in character and the next thing he would go that morning priest 
<laughs> oh shit! But the only man I'm talking about fucking <laughs> worst remember killing. Ah, probably. Uh, aye, I mean he's he stayed that much in characters. So there was a fight scene, and he got his nose broke in the fight scene. Mm-hmm. Stayed in character. <laughs> you know what I, I mean, was, I was but... Leonardo DiCaprio. It broke his nose. Says here, I Leonardo DiCaprio accidentally broke Sir Daniel Day Lewis' nose while filming the fight scene. Day Lewis continued to film the scene despite the injury. So you're right. I just he wasn't. He didn't turn into Daniel Day Lewis because he got a bop in the fucking beat. He just <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Keep fighting. Aye, it's fucking mate. Like I say, his man is just he's. When you think of when you think of this film, Gangs of New York, you you think of that character, just fucking very, very photogenic and everything. <laughs> I mean, he's like he's been taken to the somebody's time traveled and taken this guy and brought him back and put him in a film. That's how fucking good he is. Aye, aye he's absolutely brilliant because he is based on a, a real guy. Wasn't he called aye. Bill the Book? It was called The Butcher, but it wasn't called Bill Cutton. It was, I can't remember what it was called again. I forgot. Uh, it was William Pool. Aye, that's it, William Pool. Uh, so it was still a bill, a bill of sorts, um, and it was still The Butcher. But Jesus, man, what a character, what a performance. Some of the dialogue's amazing, and it always looks to me as if he's half smiling <laughs> under aye. that big tash. <laughs> he's loving aye. his fucking... Role, you know what I mean? He's a man. Aye. Aye, he's enjoying life. He's enjoying his life here. But I can't say enough about him. Fucking just so, like I say, so much. So you're not supposed you're not supposed to like this guy. Right for the off, he makes like the Amsterdam character an orphan. You know what I mean? He's a bastard to everybody around about him. Does for the fucking dirty deeds. And yeah, I come away with it going, he's my favourite character. <laughs> no, what I mean? so... By the way, he's mine, I know. And it's not until later in the film you learn about that opening scene, why, and what it's took to get to that stage. Aye. Because his valiant spared him. Do you know what I mean? And but and Bill's like, that fucking... I was that ashamed that I couldn't look him in the eye. I cut my eye out. You know what I mean? I'd have cut them both out. But I didn't think I could find him blind. You know, like, fuck, you know. I cut look, I cut out my eye and I send him it to him in blue paper. <laughs> Fucking hell. Aye. But it was also the first film that Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio worked together. So and then that that thing has blossomed, shall we say. Well, that, that spawned a few flicks that, didn't it? <laughs> aye. Aye. A few honorable mentions like the departed, Wolf of Wall Street. Just mm-hmm. oh, right. but so yeah, it's. Aye. <laughs> I <laughs> oh, thought you were going I, to say something. Yeah, so did I. I thought you were going to say something, so I just yeah. stopped what I was going to but say. But like you say is an army. It fucking it was nominated for ten Oscars, <laughs> and won zero. And I don't know how. I fucking, oh. I've not seen Chicago. No my kind of film, I, I wouldn't say, but it's nah. was it really that good that this got fuck all? <laughs> Aye. I, 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 I didn't check to see who won all the Oscars that year, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Chicago got a fucking rake in them. Do you know what I mean? And uh, as you say, it must have been some movie to take away for, for this. Danny Day Lewis is phenomenal. Leonardo DiCaprio is brilliant. And the rest are, are all great and all. Mm. I'd pick a whole one character. It'd maybe be Cameron Diaz's, <laughs> but she still does a good job. I just I I hell us. truly smashing actress. You know what I mean? That's what I was saying to you yeah, the other day. There, she's uh, she she's supposed to be she's supposed to be doing an Irish accent, and I didn't know. <laughs> I leave you Sorry? in the grace and favor of the Lord. And yeah, I thought she was doing that, but ironically, it's a filter day too. I'm like, <laughs> aye. Oh, fucking superb, man. But aye, that's like you say, mate. I, I, the acting in it is fucking superb, everybody. Like, even shout out to Jim Broadbent. He's just, 
he's a master class at playing a pure bastard. I'm telling you, man. I don't know if it's the, the wee smiley geese, whatever it is, man, but just... Aye. Just fucking... It's like the guy who only fools and horses. Slater. Just that right through, man. <laughs> Who's Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> Aye, uh, mate, as I said, in the run-up to it, I've got so much fucking love and admiration for Jim Broadbent as an actor. Like you say, as Slater. Even the dad and the borrowers. He's the... The old professor in fucking Paddington, and he's been in a million British movies and all that, and he's just Aye. fucking great, a great actor. I love him to bits, man. Aye. It was also in a Harry Potter film. I can't remember what one it was. It was the later ones, but but it was a, it was a bit bit questionable in that and all. But I think he was. Aye, it was. But in this, Aye, it plays the smashing. ruthless politician to RT, because that's oh, that's fuck. the big the big underlying thing about roundabout. Behind the scenes, but it's in your face. It's political unrest, isn't it? Everybody's vying for votes. Nothing matters yep. apart from votes. They'll get votes for anywhere. If a fucking horse shit in the street could vote, they'd get it to vote. You know what I mean? That's all they care about. <laughs> Aye. Aye. That's what I was saying. Fucking this volume very, very much echoes the fucking world of today. So much so that it's fucking terrifying. That mm-hmm. obviously riots end up happening at this, but we'll get to that because that's mm-hmm. fucking brutal. But right. just the whole fucking politicians there waiting on immigrants as they come off the boats. Fucking mm-hmm. here, there's some hot soup and breed and all that. Remember who gave it to you and all that fucking when it comes to <clears> voting <throat> day? Know what I mean? Aye. Vote and, member, vote Tammany. <laughs> and you just you see it. You see it in this country, but right now you're seeing it in America. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If what's true is true, know what I mean? A lot of immigrants are getting put into fucking swing states and all that. They're getting accommodation, food, all that stuff. And it's just like, remember who gave you that? <laughs> know what I mean? Aye. So <clears throat> as much as things have changed, they've stayed the same. Aye. But uh, even though they're, they're after their vote, it's not all plain sailing. They're coming after one vote. And then getting told, that's you, welcome to America. You've now got citizenship. Now you're going to fight for our country during the Civil War. What? You don't have to. Uh, if you get $300 on you, you can buy yourself out the draft. And they're just, they're, uh, I mean, they've come off the boat with lice and scurvy and no a pot to piss in. <laughs> so that's, that's <laughs> no, I mean, it's fucking... brilliantly done. The story's told excellent there because you do see guys coming off with one boat, get in a line, boat to Amini. Then trying hats on and getting given guns, and then they're away up another gangplank and another boat. And you hear one Irish guy saying, Do you think the feed is now? You know what I mean? Because they've been promised uh, $50 and three hot meals a day and all that. Uh, okay. That's it. Uh, the boat they're going on to is also bringing coffins off. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, so that's fucking... happening all the while under the guise of in the, like, abolishing slavery. Aye. Uh, <laughs> That's a bit slaverish, is it? No, <laughs> no I mean, I, it's exploiting one to fucking make the other happen. Know what I mean? Like, what? Ah, it's just, that... it's very fucking. What I say is, mate, it's, it echoes a lot of the shit today. No, I mean, it's fucking. It's just like the Tamney guy. Although he's not the big bad in this film, it's supposed to be Bill. Know what I mean? But it's fucking there's a a, a bigger picture happening mm-hmm. and these people are just fucking and it's just it's, it's like assuming you see the, the Irish immigrants coming after the boats and all that fucking I, you're now a citizen you're getting sent to a a war in another part of America mm-hmm. whilst see the place where you landed it is in fucking strife you <laughs> know what I mean so it's like what the fuck have we got to fight you know what I mean but, You're now a citizen of the USA, son. Now go and fight for your country. What the fuck was that? <laughs> what? I'm just fucking get off the boat. For fuck's sake. Jesus. No, <laughs> it's fucking it's mental. But see what was another good thing in this? A lot of the characters in that had different Irish accents. Now we wouldn't be able to pick up on them. You know what I mean? I'm guessing Irish people would. But it's, you, there's kind of a nod to it through the film. No, I mean, see, like when Amsterdam to be soldier, there he's like a youth for Kerry sort of thing, and it's like, I ah, there's just 
attention to detail like that that you don't uh-huh. pick up on either. You know what I mean? Aye, definitely. And uh, there's a wee bit of there's some songs in it and stuff like that as well. Like <laughs> when they're under the they're in the Irish a bit and there's <laughs> Sail away, me lassie, my dear Annie. Oh, 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 it's fucking magic. And then, that's a smashing shit. And that, it's fucking so good. You're like, hey, hey, I'm away <laughs> with me last same, uh, we any. And then there's a bit later on, and I think it's just after the Mulvaney's taking the rich people through the the uh, the square and uh, to show off. Right. And then Bill appears. And then when they disperse, you just see a wee woman walking through with a guy behind her playing a violin. And mm. It's a pure somber song she's singing. Do you know what I mean? Right. Aye. Aye. That's actually one of my fucking favourite scenes. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like you've had Bill going like that. Listen, I'm not going to help you fucking bring down America, sort of thing. And obviously the Tammany characters like, well, you're you're forgetting, you're turning your back on the future, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And then it's like in that case, you're also seeing that somebody's like that. I'm no helping these people who are coming out here and ruining the country. Instead, they, they, they have no help to fight for it, make it what it is. And then, as he's done saying that, you're seeing them going to a, another war. You know what I mean? So, they are fighting for it. Just know Aye. what you're talking about fighting for it. You know what I mean? So it's like, fucking, oh, that's, that's very poignant, that. Mm-hmm. But you, but I'm sure that's what she's singing about. Because you mentioned there that Jim Broadfoot's not the big bad. It's meant to be Bill Cutting, right? But Jim Broadfoot is the big bad because he's the organ grinder. He's right. at the back manipulating situations and and he wants the people fighting. He wants them at loggerheads and he wants votes that much that he doesn't care. So he's orchestrating everything, man. He is a big bad bastard. Aye. And he does it with a smile, oh, as you said, mate. Uh, yeah, by the way, by the way, as we've bigged up Daniel Day-Lewis in this role, Bill the Butcher. Mm-hmm. Initially, this part was offered to Tom Hanks. But he chose to take the role in the road to perdition instead. Oh. Well, I'm glad it happened. Obviously. I, I, I was I could, but shook. I could, I could see Tom Hanks doing it, to be honest with you. Mm. No, it's just I but what I can't see anybody else doing it now because Daniel Day Lewis has done it. Uh, what I mean? Of course, of course I. But had it been Tom <clears throat> Hanks, you, you I could have seen it have been like, but I don't know if it would have been the same way. Nah. Because see when it comes to Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks can be other characters and all that, but in my head you still see Forrest Gump. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Or would he? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> However, <laughs> You mean, the, the film I did do, Road to Perdition, I thought that was a fucking great movie, man. Well, he, it's, uh, it's, it's, well it's on a list. Oh, and he <laughs> plays a very sombre character in that, you know what I mean? He plays it really Aye. well. But kudos to Ed Harris in there as well for that film. But that's another day. That will happen. <laughs> I've just found out there it will happen one day. It'll be next week. Who knows? Um, Leonardo DiCaprio, mate. Um, I think we, we, did we know in 2002 it was going to be as good as it is today? Did we, did we already get inklings of that for Titanic and stuff like that? Aye. He's, he's great, isn't he? He's fucking uh, great, isn't he? Aye. Oh, he's smashing. He's smashing in everything he's done, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Even he fucking is. critters too. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Jesus. Oh, next he's thing you're a going young to child say... in that. Uh, next thing you're going to say is that Jennifer Aniston was smashing in the leprechaun. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Aye. Um, mate, I think you've seen fucking glimpses of it when it was Wits. Was it Wits eating Gilbert Grape? You know what I mean? Never seen it. I don't know if you you thought that he was going to end up where he ends up, where he's ended up. You know what I mean? Because I thought, see, Wilfred Wall Street, I thought he was fucking terrific. You know what I mean? He was mm-hmm. watching this mad manic guy, but. Ah, it's part of the process, isn't it? He is good I'm, in this. He's brilliant. <laughs> he's absolutely brilliant. I can't follow him. On, I, I stopped following him on Twitter because he's all about climate change and all that. It just does my fucking head in. And then two days ago, I noticed him at a party. 
a white party with a lot of black gen- <laughs> with a lot of black gentlemen that are uh, <laughs> under scrutiny at the moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they called these parties the white parties because they all wore white. Uh, uh, okay, Leo. Uh, here, the baby oil. Aye, uh, must have had a wee shot of Justin Bieber that night, I bet you. Oh, that boy's oh, ass must be like a fucking a remake of the Clyde Tunnel. I swear to God. Uh, um, but I, that's that's another story, isn't it? But acting wise, uh, he is phenomenal. He's done some of the, my favourite films, like The Departed and Wolf of Wall Street, uh, The Rev. I can, I can never say uh, that. Revenant. Ah, that one. Uh, uh, <laughs> which I think's going off kilter here, but I think Tom Hardy's one of Tom Hardy's greatest fucking roles, by the way. No. Um, uh, right, so he's brilliant. We've got... Uh, we've even got fucking the wee boy at E.T. in it, in it. That's his pal. Jano. <laughs> yeah, right there, Jan. He's a... It's just... The, the cast in it is fucking superb. Even the wee see people that don't even you, you don't even really see much of them. Mm-hmm. But that wee guy that's always with C Tammany. It's got a top hat and the wee glass. He's an English actor, he's fucking brilliant and all, but even see he's just stood there like wee penfold like that. This isn't he good. I know he doesn't say much, <laughs> doesn't he know? And he's a he's he's a, a quite a prominent actor. He's fucking one of Ray Donovan's brothers and uh uh, and all that. He's a great actor, he's in hundreds of things, but you're right, he just starts telling his respects and saying nothing like <laughs> fucking. And let me say, his mate, Stephen Graham, who's fucking became one of the best, I know. No, I mean, it's. Didn't see that coming, but. As it is. Quite a good gig for Stephen Graham, I know. He appears at the start of the film, and then you don't see him for the full, call it another full two hours, and then he's comes back in the end, you know what I mean? Aye. Um, <laughs> see when he loses the plot at the very start he fucking slit your throat he fucking breaks character and his Liverpool accent just comes out slit your throat <laughs> so, alright there kids how's it going there mate <laughs> listen to Rick Fast Club you listen to them boys <laughs> fucking grace steaks mate guns on spaceships fucking grace um, ah, he's brilliant absolutely brilliant so nah. I've got a wee bit of trivia for these people, but I thought it was quite funny. We talked about Daniel Day Lewis being in character all the time. Um, so much so that he get he wore a costume and he kept his hair like that, but he fuck he hated his greasy plastered on hair that much that as soon as filming stopped, he went and shaved his head bald. <laughs> That's how he turned Aye. up at the premiere. Like fucking Charles Xavier. Aye. It, it does fucking it does look so fucking horrible. See when he takes his top hat off and it's just as greasy. Like it's like the shape you can see the shape of his head. That the grease is so fucking it's but again it harps back to see fucking see life back then in that area. It must have been fucking horrendous, man. Well, I'm just imagining see when they're all sitting in the pub and all that man and like all the all the leftovers are all going into one big barrel and you can fucking well, what the fuck, man? Aye, that's, that's a thing, isn't it? The, the, the guy's collecting tumblers, getting up to the barman, and he's just putting the slops, we call them in Glasgow, slops, which is uh. what's left of a pint or in the, the drip trays, in a funnel, back into a big barrel, and he's charging people a penny or a, a, an ear or a, a nose uh. or something to get a wee drink of this fucking slops, man. <laughs> Mate, it's just... I already said see about the production and that's not that, but see just every nobody is clean apart for the hoity toities up the top, you know what I mean? But it's just like you can like build a butcher, right? He's got everything gone for him, sort of thing. He's the leader of the gang, fucking Disney and City Navy and all that, but even the matted greasy hair, the fucking fingernails are black. You know what I mean? It's fucking Aye, it's probably the, the same time, man. Uh, it's the wee, like wee posh woman in the square. You know, the trip near a guy lined Oh, is he drunk? Oh, no, he's as dead as fucking. What's it he says? Can't remember. <laughs> it's just a dead body lying in the middle of the square. Maybe he's fucking bothering about it, you know what I mean? Aye, it's. it's... Aye, uh, it's mental, man. And then it's like, even see the where they're sleeping and all that, you're just going, that must be infested. You just, you, 
you, you get a feeling that it's just all bogging. Know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody's bogging. Everybody's stinking. Nobody's immaculate, and it's fucking. It's like uh, you said, mate. You it's... can you can smell it through your eyes, kind of. <laughs> you can just imagine everything just being pungent and oh, sewage, raw sewage, and rotten food. Eat things. Oh. Mm. So let's let's jump on, mate, and get a couple of your favourite scenes. Give us a couple of them. Oh, well, I'll start off with the opening fight for the five points. Uh, it's b- brutal. No, I mean, it's very much what you'd expect at times. <laughs> There's people getting stabbed, chopped up. You see like, see the detail in some of the fucking injuries and all that. There's a guy getting fish hooked, and you just see the face start to come apart, but it cuts away. Uh, it's just fucking so brutal, man. Uh, it's fucking... Aye. So, I mean, we used to let's see all these fights. Some Somebody's always got a nice shiny dagger and all that, and you see like, all their weapons. People have just fun things and turned them into weapons. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just brilliant, man. I, their weapons, like we've just talked about, uh, they, they fit perfectly into the, the settings because they're all jet black. They're bogging. So, nice. so if the actual wound, if the wound itself isn't going to kill you, you're going to get fucking sepsis off the blade. You know what I mean? At least. It's amazing, yep. mate. You're right, that whole scene is one of mine as well. But probably mm. better, no, no better than the fight itself, but equally as important as the fight itself is that long walk up. Do you know what I mean? We value Aye. and everybody's joining them as they go. It just gives you a semblance of this. It's an old brewery that I'm into, but you're like, yep. ah, it's like a fucking TARDIS, man. It's like, it's like it's in <laughs> city. You know what I mean? It's bogging and it's stinking and it's poverty. And it's black. There's candles. And when it pans back out to show you the inside of this place, it's just fuck. Chaos. Shantytown inside Aye. a factory. Yeah, it's like it's like a mini village inside this building. It people living in caves and shit. Mm-hmm. It's fucking aye, eye opening again. <laughs> but even the dialogue in the, the start of the scene, know what I mean, you don't know any of these characters, and it's just you get the gravity of these two guys. Know what I mean? Bald a butcher and the priest. It's just I takes half all the boxes. <laughs> and you're like, oh, we have got brutalness. Aye, no half man, and. Obviously, it introduces you visually to a couple of key characters like M- Malloy and Mulraney. And, and at the very death at the door, it's a uh, monk just waiting. Yeah. Ah, so you, are you with us now, Mr. Monk? I told you, <laughs> for a price. <laughs> Ten a notch. And he says, I can eat. So, <laughs> just, quite a, a funny bit of trivia. Funny bit of trivia as well. See, when Brendan Gleeson booted that door in, the camera goes right out the door. Apparently, he fell on his ass after dinner. <laughs> Everybody was trying not to break character, man. Oh, bro. Oh, that's okay. You can just imagine that, I know. Because like, obviously, the Waynes are all watching this fucking Carmen Chapman. <laughs> These people. What are you doing? What are you doing this Saturday, priest? Oh, I'm taking away now. He's going to watch me fight to the bloody death. <laughs> Cunts just walking by with a cart. Like, what the fuck is going on there? That's right. It's some of the early oh, dialogue. It's... Who's that? Said Michael. Who is it? Said Michael. What did he do? Chase the devil out of paradise. Goodbye. Don't never take the blood off the blade, no, on it. Aye. Fucking. Okay. I'll say another scene for me is when. Uh, Amsterdam goes to kill Bill. See at the celebration, he went in the fucking battle with the five points. But it's merely anxiety and anticipation, knowing that Bill the Butcher knows, you know what I mean? And it's just, everything's fucking, again, his, how bad his character is. Just winding up Amsterdam with yeah. throwing knives at obviously, aye. And it's just fucking this uneasiness that. Like, he knows, you know what I mean? But he, he's prolonging the torture. You know what I mean? It's fucking not as brilliant, man. Brilliant. Aye. Aye, it says, uh, does it get you? You're like, oh, fuck. 
Oh, it's coming. Doesn't they know? <laughs> and then she when he throws the knife and he just swats it away with his hatchet like fucking nothing. <laughs> for a week. Absolutely for a week. It's ice. Mate, it's because it's even it, it opens, let's see, obviously, the Tammany politician, he's watching this. And again, you're seeing the brutality about the butcher that I don't think he he knows he's a dodgy bastard, but I don't know if he's like suspected how brutal it would be. You know what I mean? And just the way that the whole crowd's bowing for fucking blood. You know what I mean? It's just this brilliant man. Uh, and then he starts heeding them. Again, they're just the brutality. You know what I mean? It's fucking... Now it's time to say goodbye to that pretty face of yours. I can't even do it. I'm doing five <laughs> accents now, aren't I here? <laughs> and it, uh, no, right, mate. it just takes a big runny up with his heat, doesn't it? Fucking smashes his skull into his face three or four times. Aye. Oh. It's fucking I like I say, mate, see there's the whole scene. It's to build up the tension and all that. It's just you know he knows, but you're just like, oh no, oh no. Aye. Aye, <laughs> fling, fling, flings a hatchet up and walks away. Aye. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and even when he's throwing the knives, know what I mean? Fucking like endangering her, know what I mean? Kind of hoping to get a reaction at the Amsterdam about it, know what I mean? And it's just, mm-hmm. oh, fucking, aye. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. Aye. What were you selling, mate? I've already fired it to. <clears throat> You've took my two, I can't even love any other ones. <laughs> no. Uh, well. There's fucking plenty. <laughs> Obviously, just before uh, that one you've just mentioned, Amsterdam saves Bill's life. Mm. they're getting very pally it's very clear that Bill's taking them on as a kind of sun-like figure um, and they're in the theatre again which is quite funny because that's where he saves his life and nearly ends his life in the theatre again and the guy t- draws a gun Amsterdam like, Bill watch out Bill t- still <laughs> takes one in the shooter but Amsterdam gets him doing shoots him wrestles a gun after and all that and it's the aftermath of that Bill doesn't go and get patched up. He just gets a fucking a sling on, and then they go and get drunk with hookers and and all that. It's cracking, absolutely cracking. And see, I still I remember watching this the first time, and I'm like, ah, right, is Amsterdam been turned? Has he seen Bill mm. for being a better person? Because it, it, it makes a line. It says a line. Um, when the dragon takes you underneath his wing, it ends up it's quite warm in there. Do you know what I mean? As if yeah. you could see why people can fucking be all comfy and taking to him. So you're like, you must have had a wrestle with conscience, especially when he wakes up. Obviously, he takes Jenny up the stair, uh, sleeps well, and then he wakes up and Bill's just sitting, looking at him. <laughs> I, I don't know if Bill, I still don't know if Bill knows that's Jenny or not. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, he doesn't uh-huh. see his face and that, but I don't think he's too bothered. And then he just tells him about his dad and then walks away. You know what I mean? And I'm like, that's, I think that's why Leonardo DiCaprio cries because he's, he's doing the Anakin thing. He's right. fucking wrestling with what he's got today or should he do it, you know what I mean? Because, mm. yes, this guy did murder my dad. However, he probably done through respect and there was just a nobleness about it I don't know Aye. But, uh, I see that I, I, like you mate I wondered that I know was it to the point where obviously the, the Amsterdam character he's hung about with Bill that long he's forgot why he was doing it you know what I mean mm-hmm. and then I was I was kind of thinking oh, did he stop that guy killing Bill because he wanted to be the guy that killed Bill no, I mean, so it was that question, right. but you're right, mate. Plus, see that scene, uh, Bill's telling him about his dad and all that. That's one of my favourite scenes too, because it's like fucking gives you a, like a background into the character. No, I mean that you didn't know about him and the, how him and the priests became like fucking enemies and all that. And he says himself, "We lived by the same kind of creed in life. The only thing it separated us was faith." That's it. That's fucking... That's it. And another thing that adds weight to that as well is the yearly celebration is, of course, about the victory, but it's an equal measure. 
it's a it's a respectful nod to his father because he holds him in such high esteem. As he says himself, it's the only guy worthy of remembering whoever killed him. He's got his forty up and all that. It's just that's amazing. It's just great. I, I can't say any more words that you've not said or I've not said. Another good scene for me is when Amsterdam's not quite under the wing yet. Still haven't to wheel his way in. But he comes to see Bill and all that and Malloy's being a wee dick, isn't he? Because they've just they've been sent to the boat. It's already been robbed. But Amsterdam's clever. He says, grab a dead body and they sell that to a grave robber or doctor, whatever you call it, and he makes money. Mm. So Bill's impressed by that. He says, you came back here empty-handed, but you never you thought about it. You got, his, got me paid. But <laughs> we, uh, is it Mul- ah, it's Mulroy in it? Or McGloin, mm. whatever it is. He can't nah, handle it. <laughs> uh, what is it? What is it he calls him? Two seconds. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm in the mind of calling you a fiddling Ben. A, what? What? A fiddling bit. I never heard of that before. <laughs> but he calls them something else. And they say, then we've got business. And they start boxing. Old style boxing. <laughs> and Amsterdam right. kicks, his, kicks his ass, makes a show of him. I fucking hate that wee McGloin character. I do. Right. He's fucking, he's such a wee shite bag and a suck up. You know what I mean? And he's so denounced his self, his heritage, and his people. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's horrible. We can't. Aye. Aye. Again, that's another thing. I was like, ah, all the fucking, the old dead rabbits all fucking turned. But in a way, I kind of look at it, it was survival. You know what Aye. I mean? Definitely. There's no point holding on to the fucking, the, the old ways. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. So you've got uh, Constable Mulraney. He's became a policeman, right? So he's no went with Bill, but he's as corrupt as fucking the days long, and he steals half his ain, prick. You've got <laughs> Malroy, Mul- whatever his fucking name is. He's just, I might be with you, Bill, I might be with you, Bill, I might be with you, I might be with you. You know what I mean? He's the worst. <laughs> but it's great. Aye. It's one of the best scenes in this is when, Mo- when Amsterdam kills him, because it just jumps him for the behind, and uh, Officer Mulroney, I mean, and strangles him. They knock over the fucking big bit of cloth and it falls down and you see the church. Not that. Aye. Nice. Nice. <laughs> like that. <laughs> hey. What other scene I would say? I don't know what it is, mate, but it's, I think it's just because it's very fucking like telling again. But like, see the very end of the film. Mm-hmm. Whereas you go to gravestones and then you just see New York becoming New York and all that. And it's just like, these people are just the, the city will move on regardless right. of what this person fought for, what this person fought for, know what I mean, what they stood for, know that, and it just life continues. Mm-hmm. I like that shit and all, man. I was like, aye. That's, that's a brilliant outro on it, absolutely brilliant. And, aye. It, and it breaks into you too, you know what I mean? Which is a great mm-hmm. tune. Because uh, I don't ever think I've watched the end credits that long before, before last night, to listen to that song. I'm like, <laughs> that fucking Bono. Is it? Is it Bono? No, it was you too. I never, <laughs> never heard that song before. But it's Aye. great, mate. You're right, because it doesn't just go for the gravestone. It doesn't go for 1860, whatever it is, to present day. It goes in eras, if you know what I mean. Like you said, the turn of the century, the 30s, and then the skyscrapers come, and then the Twin Towers, and all that, and you're like, it's brilliant. Obviously, the... the, the heat stones and all that all decay because they're not getting tended to and all that and it's just like fucking the old world is fucking gone the new world and you're just like ah you've you've done that well there Mr. Scorsese man I like that <laughs> have a cookie that, that <laughs> I thought was very tarantino the music mm. and how it was done and all that I thought that was a tarantino kind of a aye uh, let me think if there's another wee scene I want to say Aye, just for visuals. Uh, there's a bit where the politicians are on their fucking big billiard room and uh, the, it said that uh, if the Irish want this, they have to put a candle in their window. And what do you think about this? Well, I think it's going to be a very dark night. 
then it just goes to every windy in New York with a candle in it, and it looks fucking so cool, man. Aye. Uh, no. Again, back to the fucking... The rich cunts, the up politicians and all that, no taking fucking into consideration what the common man is fucking feeling, you know what I mean? And just, it comes back to bite them in the ass. And what I'm saying, mate, it fucking rings true the new. Aye. Even this one of the best bits I know is voting day, innit? Aye. Get up! Voting day! And it just shows the lengths that they're all going to, to get these signatures, sending guys out to get haircuts and get back in and all that. Shave that moustache off, get back in. We'll change your jacket. <laughs> you know, fucking hell, man. That's the only time Aye. Bill wants anything to do with the, the Chinese. Aye. He just goes into the... It's a Chinese opium den, Billy. <laughs> he goes into the... <laughs> and just drags them all out to the voting polls, you know what I mean? Aye. Nah, that's... What you say, mate, it's, really this is fucking, it's really doing to the dirty. But there's but always gangs, but we're thinking just the street gangs. There's gangs of everything. Mm-hmm. Like the police are gangs, the fire brigade are gangs, the politicians are gangs, and then the hoity-toity upper-class people are fucking gangs. And it all felt was done to needing the street gangs to keep the fucking, the people on top in power. It's fucking, it's brilliant, man. It's smart as and fuck. Then, <laughs> you said about how it's a lot, of it's can be fucking through to life today. You've got the sheehees there. <laughs> the sheehees. <laughs> the mad sheehee gang. That's brilliant. Oh. Absolutely brilliant. Um, aye, gangs everywhere, mate. You're right. They've got the Metropolitan Police, the Municipal Police. Uh, every politician's got their own fire brigade, Municipal, Metropolitan, Citywide. Aye. And they all fight air territory. It's fucking. Aye. It's aye. Two of the rich, it's... two of the rich guys were now with eyebrows at a gladiator and fucking we smiled at a uh, braveheart. Aye. Hello, Lassie. <laughs> Hello, Lassie. <laughs> see when it's the fucking. See when the uh, the poor turn on the rich at the end and all. Like aye. It's fucking happening. You can see that fucking happening. You know I mean? uh, it's fucking it's, again mate it's just what really again what really kicks that off is the draft in it the draft right listen you've got to fight this war and again that's what I'm saying it fucking echoes the new because they were talking about here bringing back conscription and you're going no <laughs> no I mean why is it the fucking the, the downtrodden and all that need to go and fight something that you fucking started that nobody wants a party that you fucking started. You know what I mean? 100%. It's, it's like I say, mate, it's just fucking, it's, it's, this volume just echoes the fucking, the current day to me. You know what I mean? You've got fucking, you have people got to fucking food banks and all that that are in full-time employment and all this push. And then you're, you're talking about fucking people announcing record fucking profits and you're going like that. Eh? <laughs> no, I mean, but oh, we can't up. we can't afford to give all people this in the winter, but I we can afford to arm this country. What? That's, no, I mean, aye, it's. I don't know why we've not got a fucking an Elliot Ness kind of person that's in charge of all this push world affairs. But I don't, they don't answer to MD, didn't they? No, they just don't answer to MD, so I'll just stay with the fucking one. It's horrible. And like you say, you, you see it in this film. Pamini uses Bill to get himself power. And then when he sees the power shifting to like Amsterdam's mob and the immigrants and all that, he pounces right on that just to fucking keep himself in power. Ah, you know what I mean? It's horrible. fucking, it's, and it's very true to the day. You know what I mean? I think you fucking... this, this film shows you anything. It's that throughout history, human history that we know about, there's, there always comes a point where the people get pushed too far, and they just have had enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it ends in That's wars it. and blood. And... But <laughs> these rich bastards don't care, man. No. No, it's, it's a lot, much like you see, it's one of my favourite lines in it is when the, the rich people are talking. Saying they're wee fucking 
playing their wee pool game and all that. Billiards. And that guy says, "Was that was that thing you always say? Always hire one half of the poor to kill the other half." And you're just there, there, there is there again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fucking, I let's let's keep them warring and we'll just coin it in. It's, it's fucking so true, so true isn't it? It's fucking. Oh, mate. There's another couple of favourite lines, mate. On you go. Oh, um. Well, I'm saying my favourite, right? Because it is, it's fucking, it's hilarious. Here we go. As anybody knows, old fun, old fun day rolls in, and there's old fun banter. And this is what I usually, I send a video this to my fucking mates and all that. They send me stuff in reply. But may the Christian Lord guide my hand against your Roman popery. It's fucking hilarious. And as much oh. I pre- and I know people are going to go, that's fucking shocking. Go take a fuck to yourself. Huh? We see it as banter. Ne ne hurty ne feelings get hurted. You know what I mean? That is what it is. It's delivered uh, <laughs> so superbly by Daniel Day Lewis just <laughs> before the it's just before the battle cry. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing the way he does it. There's some there's hundreds of dialogue in this, mate. There's an arc cracking. We Amsterdam's got a good few lines as well. Like when you kill a king, you don't stab him in the dark. You kill him where the entire court can watch him die. Oh, that's <laughs> deep, man. It's deep, dude. <laughs> it's true. Because if yeah. you want to be at the top of the tree, you don't fucking vanquish your enemies away from prying eyes. Do you? you want the world to fucking see how bad? You're the gaffer, you know what I mean? You're on top. Yeah. Um, another one it comes with Tammany when they're talking about fucking doing the muscle work. And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. The appearance of the law must be upheld, especially when it's been broken. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... <laughs> but you dirty bastard. Uh, it's fucking cracking. Big Jim. Big Broadbent. What a, what a man he is. Uh, get bow and all crack, man. At my challenge, by the ancient laws of combat, we have met here at this chosen ground to settle for good and all who holds way over the five points. Us natives born rightwise by these fine lands or the foreign hordes defiling it. <laughs> Excellent. Apologies oh. for that accent. Yeah, that was fucking tragic. Um. Aye, one for both for me, mate. What's your name? Amsterdam. Amsterdam. I'm New York. Don't you ever come in here empty-handed again. You've got to pay for the pleasure of my company. <laughs> Amazing, it? Because it's just, it's so quick. Amsterdam. I'm New York. Just <laughs> huns it. Brilliant, man. <laughs> Especially after just yeah, but... sticking a knife in that wee cunt's horn that was playing poker with him. <laughs> Please uh... don't make that noise again. <laughs> Stroke the seat. Oh, your phone's fell out. Aye. Um, and one more, to me anyway, I'll say, again, well, Bill says, <laughs> when he came to finish me, I couldn't look him in the eye. So he spared me. He wanted me to live in shame. This was a great man. You know what I mean? I was like, ah, that is, ah, I get that, I get that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he returns a favour to Amsterdam. Aye. Because obviously he thinks of himself as build merciful, he says, or something like that. So he can walk in <laughs> shame so everybody can see. Um, what else? Another one for Bill. Um, is this it, priest? The Pope's new army? A few crusty bitches and a handful of ragtags? And then Liam Neeson, the priest, says, Now, now, Bill, you swore this was a battle between warriors, not a bunch of Miss Nancys. So warriors is what I brought. <laughs> oh, I said that about an old when they start announcing all their wee gang names and all that. <laughs> Imagine being one of the Pug Uglies. I know. What's your name? But the Pug Uglies. You know what? <laughs> How'd you get the that sh- guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of the names are fucking funny. Some of the patter 
it's just obviously it's synonymous with its time. It's a deed, a dead language, if you know what I mean. Because <laughs> they're looking at Jenny, right? Uh, Amsterdam's seen Jenny for the first time. Who's that? And John tells her who it is. But it's, you see, they're going like that. Oh, she'd fucking get it. She's lovely, her, isn't she? I thought, uh, she is a prim looking stargazer. Aye. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if it was a commitment, it'd be she's a little roid. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's fucking throwing, man. Oh, you're right, mate. There is outdated fucking language, though. That bit, somebody like the part is fucking superb. I don't mean oh. to call you a fiddling Ben. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, you're calling us chiselers. I. Because then I'd, I'd understand what you're calling as if we chiselers. Fixing I am. <laughs> then we've got business. <laughs> fucking brilliant. Oh. <laughs> fucking brilliant, man. No, no it's <laughs> funny as well. I thought about Tammany being a, an absolute bastard. I mean, he's got Bill in his office, right? And they're talking about, ah, there's a, there's a bit of a feeling out there that I'm no, no too like me. Up morale and all that. What'd you plan? I think we need a hanging. <laughs> what? Aye. Three or four. Aye. Aye. These poor bastards just picked at random. You know what I mean? Fucking. And then. <laughs> it's a nice locket you've got there. Here, a dollar for it. It's me mother's. Dollar and a half. Done. Aye. The, it's as if they've been paid to be hung as well. I think the families are Aye. getting a couple of quid for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's big, fucking. That big guy that's needing now. It used to be the Scottish, aren't he? City lights. Aye. There's my little laddie here. <laughs> oh. oh I hope, fucking... I've never had a bad turn in my life. May God meet me as a friend. Then he gets Aye. hung. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fucking unbelievable, man. It's again, I, I feel it's like even we smive. See that cunt, I know. So when the riot's going to kick off. And he's like, the rats have taken over. And you're going, that's how he fucking views. Just, Aye. just fucking nuts. Get his fucking head cut off, know what I mean? Bastard. Aye. And it's fucking... We've not really spoke about the riots, but see bits of the riots, it's fucking brutal, man. Aye, see, I bet they've got some poor wee fucking black guy in the street and he's getting dragged over the hair and they stab him and all that. It's fucking, you're like, off. Aye. This is fucking, Aye. this is... This is wild. I mean, there's a um, lot of systemic racism in this film, which is just, it's, it's a period movie that, that happened. Aye. Um, there was a lot of shouts, I kill the N-word, you know what I mean? And Even the wee man that's their pal, that's in the deed rabbits, he gets done in, doesn't he? Aye, that's what I mean. It's, again, echoes the world of today. When shit has gone awry, it's a certain type of person's fucking fault. You know what I mean? It's again, it's where people are pushed to aim their fucking anger at people. Mm -hmm. So, but the very good thing in this is that the politicians get their fucking get the anger vented at them. You know what I mean? They just march aye. up on the the so called rich streets and just start putting in windows and doors, don't they? Kill the rich! Yep. Ah, <laughs> yeah, aye. kill the rich! <laughs> aye, it's... Ah, it's like the fucking what well, society breaks down to the point where the army comes in to fucking just do people in. Know what I mean? And it's just ah uh, chaos. Plus, it's it, it's informative that part as well because as much as it's a film, it's obviously gone off through events. Uh huh. And it's showing you like still pictures and all that shit that this actually happened. It's fucking aye. Uh, that that was a question. Had you. See when the army are sent back in, right? And they're obviously shooting cannons for the harbour and all that stuff. But they're in the streets, they're lining up and just shooting the mob. Mm -hmm. Is that the army, right? Are they the Irish immigrants killing the rain again? Yeah, probably, yeah. That's, that's how fucked it is. Because it's like the monk as well, see when he's talking about like when they left Ireland. For the persecution and all that shit and all that, playing a war that they didn't want to be part of, and they didn't think it would follow them. But it was, it didn't follow us, it was already waiting on us. 
know what I mean? Aye. It's like fucking shut the eyes you go, oh, that's, that's fucking deep, that. <laughs> Uh, Brendan Gleeson, he's a very prominent in this movie, The Monk. Uh, he's not got a lot of screen time, but his no. death was fucking brutal. That's the one time, I think, I think it's the one time Bill kind of veers away from his own code because that's a cowardly mm. assassination, you know what I mean? Flinging a meat no. cleaver into his back under the guise of coming in for a drink and then taking his own club. Mm. Fucking, uh, yeah. I think see that. I think that all that part there. That's. I think Bull realizes his time is up. See how him and his way. I think no, that his time is up because they lost that election, mm-hmm. and then he goes to see the monk. Know what I mean? And it's. There's no consequences after that, after that, know what I mean? Because they then say to Tammany, I'm fucking done with you and all. If you come down, you're getting it. Know what I mean? Aye. It's fucking... Aye. Plus, I think that, that's the whole thing as well. See, like, all, after the priest is away, like, when he dies and all that, I think the monk becomes the, the prominent fucking like, enemy for Bill. Because I think Bill sees him as a threat as well, that he's no just... He's like a, a thinking man, know what I mean? Aye. He's no just the charge in fucking idiot. He's like he Aye. he'll change it for the right way, like and integrate into fucking the system and change it for the inside, know what I mean? So that's where I think he sees him as the bigger threat. I I the realization comes when Bill sits on that porch and he watches the two parties on their soapboxes. And he sees uh, the monk talking and getting a big reaction and getting an uprising. He's, I think that's when he's like, ah, right, it's fucking game over now. <laughs> I mean, Aye. let's Aye. go to underhand Aye, tactics. Because when Hingmi's, um when Tammany goes to see him and he's in the kitchen, he's still got the monk's blood on his face, you know what I mean? So he's he's, he's designed himself to this, is that I'm fucking going out in a bloody battle now, I'm not playing the, the politi- political like game. Know what I mean? And it's just, and then as he says that, but fucking, you're neither hot nor warm, so I spew you out. Like I, I'm f- instead of going, I'm fucking finished with you. It's I'm done with you. Know what I mean? Uh, and as for your new man, like we fucking Valen, he's your new man in your pocket. I'll fucking do him in too. And it's just, I Bill <clears> realizes <throat> what Valen already knows, and Valen has told the other boys. He says. There's 15,000 Irish a week coming off these boats. You know what I mean? We, we've we uh, not got a gang, we've got a fucking army. It's just about creating the right spark. He knows. It's like Bugs Life, isn't it? When the ants finally <laughs> realise that they out- outnumber the fucking grasshoppers. Hundreds of Only you can draw that comparison. What's that <laughs> Disney film that this reminds you of? Who the what? There's the When you win a fight in this, you get to cut off ears and noses. But it's starting Disney. <laughs> Because Hopper knows it, and Hopper knows it. He's a bad uh, man. And then the fucking we, we flick, he decides, ah, there's many us than you. <gasps> Bastards. Uh, well, it was also hilarious, mates, just because I've watched it very recently. That being the greatest showman. P.T. Barnum is in this. He is. And his bloody museum was... gets fucking gutted, <laughs> did it? There was not a fucking song sang, I tell thee. <laughs> nah. There was no great showman in there, I tell you. Aye. Oh, fucking. But again, that was factual. That was accurate Aye. to the time. You know what I mean? Great, Aye. man. Aye. It's, as much as this film is all entertainment, all that, I think a lot of the, the things that happened, a lot of the people in it are real. They were real people in time and real events happened. Mm-hmm. And it's just fucking just smart the way it's done. Because then it's... It's even you've got to get the final battle. But it used to annoy me that you didn't get the big final battle. Like fucking them all knifing each other and fighting and all that shit. But and watching it now, you kind of get a, a, a different like, ending that the street gangs realise they're no in control. No. The government's in control. And when it comes to the fucking dishing out like doings and all that, they've got the army to do them. Know what I mean? And then it's the whole bow realizing it's done. 
what he viewed as America is over. That's changing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's just fucking better that way. Instead of Aye. getting the big fucking the big fight crescendo, you know what I mean? Aye. Slum clearances done fucking brutally. You know what I mean? We had them again a hundred years later in Glasgow, slum clearances, but it was done obviously rehoused <laughs> and all that and getting demolished, but I I know I know what you mean. Didn't get the big battle at the end like you did at the start, but that was perfect. It ended up perfect when you sit back and look at it. Because I, I didn't like Bill running through the smoke. <laughs> I didn't like Aye. that. Just <laughs> you know, my wee chip at the back of the legs and all that. I was like, come on to fuck. What is this? Aye. Last super assassin. <laughs> but uh, it gets him in the end. See, when Amsterdam's hair obviously came out to its ponytail and it's fucking like Jennifer Aniston at the start of Friends. <laughs> <laughs> the early 90s Friends, man. Aye. But as a fellow man, it's fucking smashing. Tell Tells a story in New York that I don't think anybody fucking really knew up until oh. this point. Obviously New Yorkers and all that shit would have knew. But us being the outside and the people across the water, uh-huh. didn't he? Well, I tell you what, I, I, would, I would hazard a guess that a lot of New Yorkers are ignorant to that kind of timeline and all, by the way, because it's such a fucking metropolitan, uh, multicultural city. Um, but that uh, being said, uh, before you give it your mark out of 10, mate, the film was two hours and 47 minutes long. Did you feel it? Nah. The only only time I kind of thought it kind of dragged a wee bit is when Amsterdam was recovering for getting a dune. Mm-hmm. But other than that, the rest of it just seemed to flow fucking day its thing. There's a wee, a wee five minutes there where it's just mainly Jenny tending to him into it and candlelight. Aye. Of, but so aye, it was fine. Um, because I know people look at time film times and go, oh for fuck's sake. But again, if it's a great movie, you don't feel the time. You know what I mean? It's like Green yeah. Mile, that's about three hours and all that, and you don't feel it. But <laughs> um, that being said, you get a wee greet at the end. <laughs> Oh, you do. Don't don't talk to me about that. That being said, what do you give it out of ten, my man? Oh, for me, mate, it's a nine. I rather enjoy the movie. Mm-hmm. So, and I think you get one of the most predominant fucking characters in film history in Bill the Butcher. Right. So, you so that is a nine. It's up there as a cinematic classic, my book as well. Ticks all the boxes. Um, it's a 9 out of 10 for me as well. Uh, so there you go, folks. 18 out of 20 for Gangs of New York 2002 by Martin Scorsese. If you've not seen it, and I know there's a couple of people on the uh, Facebook chat that haven't seen it that are going to watch it. After back, i seen the trailer that I posted. The flower oh, looks fucking good and all that. Younger ones and that. I says, ah, you, listen, yeah. you will not be disappointed. So enjoy it. And then obviously let us know what you think of our critique and what you think of our marks out of 10. Um, yeah. So there we go. Is it time to play <laughs> movie bingo, movie bingo, movie bingo? <laughs> yeah, it is indeed, my friend. <laughs> so I'm picking for your list. Yeah. Give me a wee, a wee number here, a wee number. I'll just pluck this out the air there. Eighteen. <laughs> Next time is impression time because you have picked Terminator 2. Hey, hey that's on my list at all. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. John Connor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, wonderful. Uh, there's a director's cut of that as well. I need to see what one I've got. I can't remember. It doesn't oh. matter. I've seen them both. Ah. The, ah, the so scene, you go. Like scenes and that are a bit fucking dead space anyway. But excellent Terminator Two, one of the again another groundbreaking film, especially for CGI and you know, on it. Uh, always, always comes into the conversation as potentially the best sequel. So, uh, one of the best sequels of any franchise out there. Yes, definitely. But uh, we'll discuss that more in depth. And if I'm no mistaken. 1990 or 91, isn't it? We should have quite the trip back in our time machine uh, about events of that I, time. 
Is it no nineteen ninety nine or something like that? What? No, it's ninety, nineteen ninety. Oh, it's not ninety one, ninety one. But but my fucking oh, I must be thinking of the fucking the third one or something. <laughs> Rise of the machines. Even not even that was two thousands. <laughs> that was two thousands. No. Aye, aye, nineteen ninety one. There was the even <laughs> fucking born. Oh, Seen that? Well. I could have been in. I could have been in the, the oven there, as they say. Oh, it really is. Or I could have been a dirty thought. That's a smashing <laughs> thought. That it really is. But there we go, folks. We hope you enjoyed this week's pod, and are looking forward to next week's. Um, with another classic movie from us here at What's the Script. Thank you for all your likes, shares, follows, loves. Thank you to Quaint. Thank you to Native Origins. Uh, but thank you to you. It's you guys that listen, watch, feedback. And we, we like to hear fees. We really do. We love to hear fees now and again. So when you hear this, it'll be Happy Friday. Or as people like to say, my look, Happy Friday! <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. Love you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking up some chiclets in there. Big old titty. And Big old titty. Mine, it's too. <laughs> He's cooking up a storm in here. <laughs> oh, shit, we're going off in tangents. Right, mate, yeah. unless there's anything else you want to say, it is cheery bye for myself. No, no, no. Uh, again, cheers, thanks for listening. Share, like, tell everybody, and enjoy, most importantly. And uh, that's it's a sign off from me. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. The views and opinions of this podcast are solely our own, with no direct intention to offend or upset. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. Share your dreams